with the Lord mm. this weekend. Um, we'll be talking today about building an altar unto the Lord. I'm going to be out of Gen Genesis chapter 12 and 13. Come on. Genesis 12 and 13 tells a story about the Lord about the Lord calling Abraham, then he was Abram, out to a life that was completely new and completely his own from the Lord. And the story speaks of obedience and disobedience, faith and fear, setbacks and comebacks, and it is relevant to you and I in our life today. There are a few lessons we can learn from the calling over Abram's life, and I want to talk about them this morning. One lesson in particular, in, in particular which I've uh, come to apply in my own life spiritually, and he has brought me through times of obedience, disobedience, faith, and fear, and he's brought me through setbacks and my comebacks. That lesson is this, building an altar unto the Lord. Yeah. I don't want to make it a super spiritual message. I want to make it a practical message, man. Amen. I'm going to show you how to apply what we're about to uh, be taught today uh, in your life as you walk in your call. <clears throat> and if you can get a hold of the practical application to this message, it'll help you move through your call to your promise. Mm. I'm going to do some reading, and I need you to follow me closely. I need you to follow the reading closely because it sets the foundation for the whole message, okay? I'll do the reading, just follow it. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you... All the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his, brother, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan, and Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebin tree of Moran, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord, and he called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there. For the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed I know you are a, a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore it will happen when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you're my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and I may live because of you. So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh and his house with plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you've done to me? Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now therefore, here's your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men. Uh, um, so Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, his wife and all that he had. Chapter thirteen. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot went with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold, and he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar he had made there at first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, 
and they, they might dwell together, for the possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Parasites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. It is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw the plain of the Jordan, and it was well watered everywhere before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, um, like the garden of the Lord east of, uh, uh, like the garden of the Lord, as you go down the Lord. Then Lot chose himself the plain of the Jordan again. He went east, and they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the plains. Uh, uh, and pitched his tent as far as Samaria, but the men of uh, Sodom and, and it were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward and southward, eastward and westward, for all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just pray, Father Lord, that you keep open our spiritual ear gate, heart gate, Father, that we can hear and receive your word, Father Lord, that it would change us, forever, my God, that it would change our walk of faith forever, that it would change our perspective of the call forever, my God, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. amen. The Bible goes on after that to say that Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the, the terebinth tree of Amorim, which are in Hebron, and again, he built an altar unto the Lord. Not much is said about Abram prior to chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, other than that his father was Terah. Uh, Terah. Uh, they came out of the land of Ur of the Chaldeans, and he went with his father to Haran, where his father then died. But it's evident in the scriptures that, every, that, that Abraham has a relationship with God because chapter 12 begins with the Lord speaking to Abraham. We see that the Lord calls Abram out to something that is completely his own now. Outside of his country that he's familiar with and comfortable in and away from his family, which are likely all of those who are closest to him. I need you to stay with me because I'm going somewhere with all of this. Abraham believed the Lord's spoken promises to him. And we know this because chapter 12 verse says that Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. We see that Abram was obedient, but not all the way, because he took his family with him after the Lord told him to get out from your family. Abram had the faith to step out on God's word, but he gave in to fear on his journey when the famine started. He gave in to fear on the journey when the famine started, and he tried to make for his own way. His Egypt plan, a complete failure. Come on, come on. He experienced some strife with his nephew Lot and caused him to part ways with his family, which is what the Lord had originally asked him to do anyhow. Does sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yes. <laughs> we get started on the call, fear sets in, and then we start to make our own plan. Yeah. Come on. We try to make our own thing happen. We try to make the provision happen ourselves. Come on. And it usually, we usually find that we get ourselves <laughs> in a wreck. Yes. That we look, we, we're looking back at a complete mess, yeah. and we're asking God to fix it again. But that's okay, amen. I said that's yeah. okay. I want you to see. Let's see. We see here that Abraham went through some setbacks before his comebacks, and he wavers in his faith as he sets out on his call. But I want you to see this morning that all of that is okay because we still know Abraham today as what the father of faith. Of faith. You see, it doesn't matter what setbacks you have. The, that, that, that may delay God's promise, but it doesn't make void God's promises. Come on, come on, that's right. good. What matters is this, that through it all, when the Lord calls, you respond. Yeah. When the Lord calls, you respond. 
When the Lord gives you a promise, you believe. Amen. Come on. We see through it all that Abram sought after the Lord because no matter how difficult it got, Abraham wanted to do what was right before the Lord. How do I know this? I know this because through Abraham's walk of faith, at unforgettable peaks in his life, we find Abraham building an altar unto the Lord. Let's talk about the altar unto the Lord. The altar that's built unto the Lord represents a time and a place where we've had a personal encounter with God. Amen. An unforgettable peace in our life, you'll find that Abraham is building an altar unto the Lord. I don't want you guys to get super holy. I don't want to visit nobody's house and they have ten altars in the backyard. <laughs> right? That's the kind of what I'm talking about this morning. I'll put it into some context. But unforgettable peace in our life, man. We need to learn how to build spiritual altars in our heart unto the Lord. That's good. Come on. A memorial, if you will, that speaks to a time and a place where we had a personal encounter with the Lord. Because it's significant to our call. Mm -hmm. Those personal encounters, the altars you build, they're significant to our call. Mm -hmm. When we come to an altar building encounter in our life with the Lord, it's a place of altering in our own life. It's a place of changing. It's a place of shifting. It's a place of moving. There's a price to be paid at the altar. And the cost for the altars that you build come from here. You know it because God intends that something be altered in your life. God intends that something be changed, that something be shifted, that something be moved out. Here's what we need to understand about the altar. It's not for nothing. It's not for nothing. In Abraham's life, in my life, and in your life, to receive the promise of God, when he calls you to something, it's to a new thing. That means that we're going to have to make some room in our life for transformation. So we build a spiritual altar in our heart unto the Lord. Chapter 12 started and said that the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I'll show you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curse you. And you shall be a, a blessing to all the families in the earth. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with them. And Abraham was 75 years old when that happened. The word goes on to say that they came to the land of Canaan and Abraham passed through the land. And then the Lord appeared to him and said to your descendants, I will give this land. The Lord shows Abram the land that he said he would show him at the beginning of the call. And look at what Abraham does. The word says, and there he built an altar unto the Lord who had appeared to him. Yeah. It was an unforgettable peak in Abraham's call to faith. And he built an altar unto the Lord. I believe it was an altar of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord for the tremendous promise that God had just shown him. Yes. And we're going to see that it serves several purposes in Abram's life. I remember the promise I received from the Lord as he, called, as he called me out and he wanted to do the work through my own life. He said to me, look, it was specific. If you serve me all the days of your life, the Lord said to me, if you serve me all the days of your life, I will remove from your family life, that life of gangs, violence, drugs, and alcohol. Though that was the promise to me from the Lord when he called me out. Because for many years, uh, 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 it, 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 for many years, my family was torn apart by gangs, by violence, by drugs, by alcohol. You see, it wasn't the thought of hell that moved me as an unbeliever. It wasn't the thought of hell. Life was already hell for me. All that I experienced in life, it was already yeah, hell. What moved me was the thought of something me. Come on, come on. Come on. For about 
about a week, I felt the presence of God over me. And all I did was praise. All I did was praise. In the middle of the night, for four days, for four days, God called me out of my sleep. And I woke up like a joke every night about the same time, one or two in the morning. And I ran to another room that I had set up just so that I could get on my face before God. Come on, come on. Every night, it never felt at that time. And I would stay on my face in the presence of God for hours. My wife would even knock at the door. Babe. Hey, I need the keys. Um, or are you going to take? I got to go to work. I need you to take the boys to school. That's how long I was on my face. And I didn't even realize it. And I couldn't put context to it then. But what I was doing is I was building a spiritual altar unto the Lord. Here's another thing that God did through that process. God began to show me my heart. He began to show me my heart. And as clear as if you were watching the TV, I began to see my life. And I began to see all the people that I have hurt. And I began to see all the chaos that I had caused, all the families that I had destroyed, all the chaos, all the, all the heartache that I had caused in my own family. And I poured myself out before God. And I realized that what he was doing is he was releasing me from a lifetime of strongholds. Because I needed to make room in here. I needed to make transformation so that he can fit the promise of that new thing he was calling me to The Lord released me from a lifetime of strongholds. It happened at the altar and I began altering my life. I began changing. I began shifting things in my life. I began moving things out of my life. I wanted to make room for the new thing that God was doing. And I didn't care how silly I looked. And I looked silly. I didn't care who laughed at me and people laughed at me. I didn't care who walked away from me. And some of the most important people in my life walked away from me. The only thing I cared about was that new thing that God promised he was going to do in my life. I wanted to make way for transformation so I can see the spoken promises of God in my life. <clears throat> when the Lord begins to speak to you and He calls you out to something that is completely your own, that is something new, when the Lord begins to reveal His promises to you and you have a personal encounter with the Lord, you build an altar of praise in your heart unto the Lord. Come on. And you begin to alter your life to make room for the promise. Let's awesome. talk about another another altar that's important in our call. This won't be new to you, but the significance of the altar will make more sense as I explain it in this context. When God calls you out of everything you're familiar with to a new thing, you're going to find that the greatest battle is between the thing God is calling you to and the old ruins that you just came out from. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on. And the word says that after Abram built the first altar, Genesis 8.8, 8, it says that he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord, and he called on the name of the Lord. Bethel on the east, Ai on the west. He built an altar in between and he called on the name of the Lord. He called on the name of the Lord. After, after Abram builds an altar of prayer unto the Lord. That's an altar of prayer that he's building. The scripture says that Abram built an altar unto the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. Why does he do that? Maybe where, is, where he's at right now will reveal to us why. The literal meaning of Bethel which was on the west side of him, and Ai, which was on the east side of him, was Bethel, the house of God, and Ai, the old ruins. Mm. So good. Come on. 
When you're in the middle of the house of God and the old heap of ruins, the greatest thing you can establish in your life is an altar of prayer unto the Lord because you will need it to win the battle between the old and the new thing that God is doing in your life. Here's the thing about this one. Nobody wants to hear this one anymore. Come on. Nobody wants to hear about prayer anymore. Nobody wants to, to put in the prayer time necessary in this walk of faith, in the call. But you have to get this part of your call right. You have to get it right now. The sooner you do, the better you'll be better off for it. Mark my words, if you don't know it yet, you'll learn someday that prayer is the only thing that changes things. Prayer is the only thing that shifts things. It's prayer that moves things into your life. It's prayer that moves things out of your life. It's prayer. You need to establish an altar of prayer unto the Lord. God doesn't care about long, distinguished sounding prayers. God wants to hear from you. God wants to know that you still hear him when he calls you. Amen. Because he wants to see you to your promise. When you and the Lord go back and forth calling to one another, he's concerned with one thing. What is the condition of your heart? Is it full of faith or is it full of fear? Because whatever it's full of is going to determine whether you're headed to Bethel, the house of God, or you're headed to Ai, the old ruined pieces. Oh, yeah. Come on. Good. There are going to be many setbacks in our walk. We're not always going to make the right decisions. There will be times when we go off on our own and try to make things happen because fear overrides faith in our life. The altars that we build during unforgettable peaks with the Lord help us to get back from the setbacks. <clears throat> Let's watch this play out with Abram. So there's a great famine in the land we read. And fear overrides faith and Abram goes down and dwells in Egypt to try to make things happen on his own. He lies about his wife, which again is out of fear. Pharaoh tries to keep on Sarai because she's beautiful, but the Lord's grace protects her. Hits Pharaoh with some plagues. Pharaoh finds out. They say, Abram, what are you doing? They kick rocks at him. You got to go. Yeah. He say, here's your wife. Take everything that you have and go on your way. Get out of here. Yeah. Wow. And then the verse 13 says, Then Abram went from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had a lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. I didn't even know why he was doing it in Egypt. He's rich. Yes. The famine wasn't affecting him. Yeah. Okay. And he went on his journey from south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Amen. Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. Wow. And there, Abraham began again to call on the Lord. Build a spiritual altar in your heart unto the Lord. You're going to find that it will help you come back from your setbacks. Abraham fell off, but as he found himself heading back toward the house of God, Bethel, he went back to that familiar place where he had built the altar, and he remembered wow. the call. He remembered the promise, and he began to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. There are countless battles that we're going to go through. But the promise is greater than the battle. I said the promise is greater than the battle. And the promises that you put in your heart, they will bring back to recollection the promise that will help you get back on track, man. Amen. Yes. When we get lost in difficulty and we find no reference point to identify uh, where we are in our calling, we head back to the heap of ruins that we are familiar with. But when we build an altar unto the Lord, you're building something familiar in the new place that God is calling you to. And when difficult places happen over here in the call in the new place, you have something that you're familiar with that you build, that you can go back to. In the new place, not in the old place.
We can learn from this experience that Abram's going through. If you can just start heading in the direction of the call. If you can just start heading into the direction of the call, God will make sure that you experience unforgettable peaks in your life with Him. Regardless of your failures and your setbacks, you just keep on building because you will find yourself stepping into your promise. You need to get to that first place that God is calling you to because the manifestation of one promise in your life from God will strengthen you for the next promise. That's it. Mm. Come on, that's a good word. The manifestation Come on. of the first promise in your life will strengthen you mm. for the next one. You'll be blown away by the difference it will make in your life. If I didn't testify about my life and everything that God had called me to, you couldn't look at me and know everything that I had been through. I was just talking with somebody yesterday and said, Really, you? Praise <laughs> <laughs> God. Good work. It's the manifestation of His promise. Yeah. Well, good work. Good work. Come on, man. <laughs> Heed the call. Heed the call. Look at what happens with Abram when he finally heeds the call the way God speaks it to him. Verse 14 says, And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, remember he told him at the beginning, separate from your family. But he took his family with him. It's here for a reason. And the Lord said to him, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now. And look from the place where you stand, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For the land you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. All of a sudden, the manifestation of the promise of God. The Lord is no longer saying, I will show you the land. The Lord is no longer saying, I will give you the land. He is now saying to Abraham, for the land you see, I give to you. From the call to the promise. From the call to the promise, Abraham built altars unto the Lord until there was enough altering, enough cutting, enough changing, enough moving, enough shifting, enough transformation so that God was able to fit the promise into Abraham's life. <clears throat> the cutting, the changing, the shifting, that doesn't sound good, huh? It's like, oh man, I gotta go do some cutting. <laughs> 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 Me and him about Juanito's big knife. <laughs> <laughs> Butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> Butter knife. <laughs> Butter knife. <laughs> Butter knife. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's it's a hard thing. That's, that's our thought process when we think about this, yeah. about the altar. Yeah. About the altering in our life, the change, the shift, and the moving that happens. That's what we think, Ugh, ouch, that's, that, that part's going to hurt. Nobody, nobody likes that. From the call of the promise. And the Lord goes on to say that I'll make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. He tells him this, Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Amen. The call of the promise. And the Lord told Abram, Get up, walk through it. Walk through its lanes. I'm giving it to you. You know what he was saying to Abraham? He said, you've heeded the call. Now walk in your promise. Walk on your promise. Understand the depths of your promise, the length, how, how large your promise is that I've given you. He yes. said, he, he was telling Abraham, enjoy the experience of your promise. Go. Mm. Mm. Experience and enjoy the entirety of your promise. I want you to know that it's been 18 years since the call and the promise that God had given has given gave me that day that I that I explained that experience for, and I am experiencing the promise of God in my life. Yes. Amen. Amen. God has cut for my family a life of pain, a life of drugs, a life of violence, a life of alcohol. I don't have that concern anymore. That's right. Come on. When I'm driving around, who's going to pull up on the side of me? Come on. Yeah. Where I can and cannot go. That's right. right. Come on. When my family is with me and when I shouldn't have them with me. Come on. I don't have that concern anymore. That's right. Amen. A desire to fall off and get into drugs and, 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 and get back to I don't have that concern. It's, it's, it's not an issue with it. I, I, I think nothing, nothing it has no impact on Come me on. so ever, Amen. at all. 
My own homeboys don't recognize me. Come on. I can be in the car because I'm hoping my whole time that I can't find out and people don't recognize me. Let's keep going. God's not done here. And neither was Abraham. Look, he got one promise, but there's more. There was another unforgettable peak. This was another unforgettable peak in, in Abraham's life. What does Abraham do? He builds an altar unto the Lord. Yeah. Look at verse 18. Then Abraham moved his tent and went down by the cherubim tree of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built an altar unto the Lord. This altar is an altar of peace. There's something significant that happens in our life when we heed the call and get to that place where we are now walking on the promise of God. There's something significant that happens in our life. When you experience the promise at that place that God has called you to, there's a trust and a peace in the Lord that develops on the inside of you. Your faith is strengthened and you begin to understand that if... That if God said it, that settles it. Yes, right. Come on. Come on. If God said it, that settles it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. And it doesn't matter what it sounds like. Now, when God speaks, you just get going toward the call. Your concern is no longer how you're going to get there and do what God is trying yeah. to do. You just alter on the way to the call. You just alter on the way to the promise. You just trust God. And God takes care of the rest in your life. This last altar that I want to share with you. This last altar that I want to share with you will come well after you have experienced some promises of God in your life. And it is the most difficult altar that you will have to build unto the Lord. The most difficult altar you will ever have to build unto the Lord. It's called the altar of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Genesis 22 starts out by saying this. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. And he said, Abraham, Abraham, calls him immediately. Here I am. Abraham responds. And he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moab and offer him there as a burnt offering to one of the mountains, uh, on, the, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abram rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he spit the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw the place afar off. And Abram said to his young men who were with him, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. Listen to what he says. And we'll come back to you. And we'll come back to you. So Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and he put it on Isaac's back. And he said, Let's go, son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together up the mountain. But Isaac spoke to Abraham and said, Father, my father. And Abraham said, here I am, son, what's going on? And he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said to his son, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. 
There will be times when God calls you to sacrifice the things which you love most in your life. Come on. And I'm not going to talk about the old story about how God stopped Abraham from sacrificing his boy. What I want you to identify here in the story is the trust and the peace that Abraham had developed since the first time God had called him. The scriptures say that Abraham took his son, gathered the wood, and he headed for the altar. And verse 4 says, Then on the third day he lifted his eyes and he saw the place afar so off. And he told his young men who were with them, Stay here. Me and the boy are going to go over here and we're going to worship. So, they, Abraham, so then Abraham, he strapped Isaac with the wood. He got the fire and the knife and he started heading over. And then his son said, Father, we got everything, but where's the sacrifice? And he said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham heeds the call. No longer wavering. No longer trying to make his own way. That's good. No longer in fear. Abraham headed for the altar because he trusted God. Abraham now knows something about God that we need to understand, men. When God calls you to the place, the altering place, it's not to take something from you. Amen. It's not to take something from you. It's so that He can restore something to you. We don't like to hear about the shifting and the moving and the removing that happens at the altar. Because we don't understand that at the altar, God doesn't want to take something from us. Amen. He wants to restore something to us. Oh, good, word. good word. Come on. See the word for in verse 8, where it says, God will provide for himself. In previous scriptures, the previous versions of the scripture, for wasn't there. So it read like this. It read like this. My son. God will provide himself a burnt offering to the Lord. God will provide himself a burnt offering unto the Lord. The altar experience that we're reading about right now was a display of prophecy for what God would do in a time to come. The call to walk in faith that Abraham fathered in for us, he's the father of faith, that that call to walk by faith that he fathered into us was really a gospel message. It was really a gospel message. But Abraham's faith moved God to preach it to him before it's time. Let me show you. Galatians 3.8 says this, and the scripture if you look in your Bible, you'll see that scripture is capitalized. And the scripture, capital S meaning God, the Bible says that the that 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 the Lord and his word are one. Yeah. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, that's us. Foreseeing that he would justify the Gentiles by faith. Preach the gospel to Abraham. I love you, man. I love you, man. I, I, I'm not in this ministry for, for no reason. There's a purpose that I'm in this ministry. I've been in this ministry for many years. I used to just help out Pastor Brother Jesse, and, and he really showed me a lot, really helped develop me. But ever since then, I, I developed a heart for men, and I love you guys. I love you guys. I want to see you up, 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 responding to your call. I want to see you walking on your promise. I want to see that for your life. But listen to this. What if, what if the only reason you haven't received the promise of God in your life is because you haven't built an altar in your heart unto the Lord? 
What if the only reason that you haven't received the promise of God in your life is because there hasn't been enough cutting out of your life. There hasn't been enough shifting in your life. There hasn't been enough moving out of your life so that God can make way for transformation and fit into your life the promise that he has for you. Wow. God wants to see you build altars at unforgettable peaks in your life with Him. Not to take something from you, but to restore something to you. And that's what the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate altar and sacrifice of Jesus Christ was for. It was a process that God will use to restore all things. You can read it in the Word. Yeah. At unforgettable peaks in your life, in your call, you build an altar unto the Lord. Can we get that song right? I believe the hand of God has been over this weekend. I believe the hand of God has been over every speaker that has given the word this weekend. And I believe the hand of God this weekend has been over each and every one of your life. It's not a coincidence that you were here. It's not a coincidence the struggles you went through to get here. The enemy trying to keep you from getting here, but you got here. You got here. It's not a coincidence. The, the hand of God is over this place right now. The hand of God is over.
uh, we're going to receive an offering, amen. But you know what? It's been a weekend that has touched my life, honestly. Uh, and I was, I didn't tell none of the guys that came with me up here, and I, and I was praying in myself, saying, God, because God hears a prayer, correct? Yes. But He hears a crying heart. Yes. And when I came up here, and, and all these, all these messages and and things that God has done in our life, I, I see men crying. And I, when I was coming out here, I said, God, let him cry. You made me cry. Yes. You made my heart cry. My tears come out. And I said, God, let, let him from the back to the front. Let him cry out to you, God. Because how many know that we need to change? Yes. How many know that we need God to change our lives? Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive an offering. That was an awesome, awesome. I never knew the brother's testimony. I, I, never, I never really got to really talk to him. I got to talk to things. But for him to be in that room and just say, you know what, God? I got a kick out of it because they didn't even recognize me. I checked out to wow, God. Right. This is what God does, man. Yeah. That's right. You're not the same. That's right. man. You've changed, and I believe man. that when we go, we go down the hill, yeah. you know what? I, I believe something oh, happens, yes. brother. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Something yes. happens. Yes. Man. Yes. Now, when you go down the hill, like Pastor Richard said, hey, the enemy's waiting out there, too. Yeah. Right, Pastor? He's waiting down there. Yeah. He's got a skirt on. Whoa. <laughs> He's got trucks down there. Huh? He's got guns down there. He's got a big head down there. He's waiting. But I believe that he is quick today. With the full armor of God, this smile. Even in our church, DCCI, in men's life today, I begin to see the change. I begin. They don't look the same, Mario. You don't look the same, man. Lord. But right now we're going to give an offering. I just want to read the scripture real quick. It says, for God so loved, Brother Jerry back there gave me this. And it, it, it's, it's about the translation of, a, of Hebrew. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only unique, unique son. Unique. And when he said that to me, I said, wow, Brother Jerry. I said, wow. It was unique what God gave you. And why shouldn't we give an offering to the Lord for the kingdom of God today? Whatever the cause is. The theme was heed the call. Heed of giving. Heed the call in your life. And it, I always said this to myself. It's real easy to give. It's the easiest part of giving your life to God is just to reach out in your pocket and, and give a buck, give a hundred, twenty, whatever it is. That's the easiest. It's easy to give. It was easy for you to give drugs when the, the guy was loaded, man. He didn't want to do drugs anymore. Yet you put him on his table. So easy. Why can't we just give to God? Let's receive an offering. Amen? Man, let's man. receive an offering. And uh, let me give one of your hands. Amen. God is good. Amen? Pastor Richard, come up here with offering. Amen? Come on, back up. Thank you, Lord, for this offering. I thank you for the work of God for this weekend. But this weekend is not over. It will be extended down in the city, in the country, in our church, in our homes, in our jobs. And I bless every giver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I can help the, the, the pastors and the, uh, the leadership up here for a moment, moment please. I, I, I felt in my heart I needed the armor bearers too. Jerry, you know who you are. Don't be shy. They will give a pizza away if they're not first. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. Can you guys stand right here and enjoy it? I've been quickened by the Lord to, to pray for us. Yes pray for us. And we go down the, to the hill. From this hill, we become tighter. Yes. yes. We work in unity. Yes. We lift up our senior pastor. Yes. yes. We encourage our senior pastor. Yes. We lighten the load yes. of our senior pastor. We yes. carry the mantle of Christ Jesus yes. in our heart. Yes. And we do the work with excellence. And I really believe that this weekend was 
long overdue for us. Uh, uh, long overdue for us. That not not only uh, the men in the church that are rising up to yes. heed the call, but those that have already <laughs> been walking in the call for many many years or many months. But I really truly believe in uh, uh, from the, the bottom of my heart that when we go down there, we got tight. We get tighter. Amen. We've been knit, woven. The one thing that I can I can say is we can agree to disagree sometimes, Amen. but we all have one direction that we're going, and that's up. And we all have one up. We all have one vision, and that is to rebuild, restore, and raise up. Yes. Jesus, I bless the front line. I bless the warriors, the soldiers. I thank you, Father, for them, for having our back. I thank you that there will be no man left behind. That when we fall, we shall help each other get up. When, when we're blessed, we rejoice for the blessing. When we continue to move forward, we shall encourage, we shall prophesy, and we shall speak life. I thank you for the double portion upon each and every man. I thank you for the spirit of Elisha in Jesus' name because he, Elisha had to. He had to be watching Elijah in order to receive the double portion. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. I boldly declare, declare and I decree that the leadership of Destiny Community Church shall glorify God. Shall restore the law. Shall raise up those that believe and remove every obstacle and use that obstacle in the name of Jesus for an opportunity to fulfill the gospel. I thank you for these young men that are in leadership also. Because they, in the Old Testament, the, the praisers, the worshipers went before the priests. And the priests, once the, the praisers went, there was favor from God. The priests went ahead and then you, the church, followed in the battle. And I thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, that we shall seal this with the Holy Ghost. Yes. We shall bind it with love. Yes. And we shall be more than conquerors by the word of God. Amen. Because it is alive, active, and sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes. Use your sword. Use your sword. Learn how to be equipped. Never take off your armor. Never take off your armor. Not even in the shower. Come on. In Jesus' name we say. Amen. Can I ask all of you to do me a huge favor before you leave this building? Can I ask all of you to do me a huge favor before you leave this building? I'm going to have a paper and pen and a on the table in the back, back there, I want all of you to write your names and your phone numbers for me, please. We do that. Say, I'll do that. Say, I'll do 